Hello and welcome to History Soaps, you name it. Today's video follows on from my last monthly videos on King Wydak Machiogain and Queen Erka Ingin Lorne of Ailek and focuses on their son, Mwerchitak Mac Mwardaid. Before I begin, I'd like to apologise for any mispronunciations and ask you to like and subscribe if you enjoy this. By the way, I've reformed the outline and detail of my videos and will, in due course, be remaking my videos on Kings Eogan MacNeil and Muadak MacIogain of Ailet, as well as Queen Erka, to give you new information and a more interesting account of these fascinating historical figures. If you prefer my older version of the videos I've already uploaded, don't worry because I have no intention of taking them down. Without further ado, let's get on to today's video. Mwerchitak Mac Day, born at an unknown date and died in either 532 or 534, also labelled Mac Erke and Mwerchitak Mac Erke, was purported to be a High King of Ireland for a time in the 6th century. Born Prince Mwerchitak Mac Mwardaig of Ailet, he was most likely born in the late 460s or early 470s, if you agree with my proposed date of 465 or 466 for his parents' marriage. He is the only one of King Mwardaig's four sons we can definitely say was born to him and Queen Erka. The other three, Feridak, Moan and Tigernak, may have been also, but this is subject to debate because they didn't join Mwerchitak in founding the Chanel Maek Erke branch of the Chanel Enyo Gain, but created their own dynasties instead. The Irish annals do not hold a great deal of trustworthy details on him, and the information that is there shows an indication of significant retroactive changes, adding to the source's unreliability. The aided Mwerchitak Maek Erke which is a Middle Irish story from the 12th century, recounts Mwerchitak's supposedly paranormal demise. Life The genealogists state that Mwerchitak was part of the Ewanil as the son of Mwardak Machiogain, the grandson of Eogan Machniel and great-grandson of Nile of the Nine Hostages, hence why he was named Mwerchitak Mac Mwardag. His being named Mac Erke by some historians and writers is explained through his maternal ancestry. Mwerchitak's mother was Queen Erke Ingin Moon, who academic Thomas Charles Edwards doesn't believe actually existed, a common view taken when looking at figures of so many centuries away, making him the grandson of King Lorne Machiurk of Dalriata, as well as the grandson of Nile of the Nine Hostages. His maternal grandfather is also termed Lodan, King of Alba by Charles Edwards. Yet, not all the records with the name Mac Erke are actually discussing Mwachtak, for this was a popular forename as well. We can be sure that there is at least a chance in some of the annals left behind that Mwachtak has been mixed up with others, because there are records there spanning 50 years from 482 until his death in 534, though it is also a possibility that he was alive at both points in time. Actually, it would be surprising if he wasn't. The Annals of Ulster are the first to discuss Mwerchitak and credit him with the defeat and murder of High King of Ireland, Ailil Malt, in 482 at the Battle of Ochak. This took place in the Irish Midlands. Different entries give different accounts of his companions and allies, as well as what happened. One, for example, records his cousin Lugaid Macloigieri, born at an unknown date and died in 507 as his supporter. Lugaid was the son of his deceased great uncle, former High King Loigier, and would go on to be High King one day too. Naturally, he would support his cousin rather than someone else, and probably expected that Mwerchitak would allow him to take over the claim to the High Kingship. Whether he did so or not is not easy to discover, for both men will become High King in time, yet given that Lugay died a full 25 to 27 years earlier than Mwerchitak, I'd say he allowed him to take the prize of the High Kingship first likely figuring he'd have plenty of time to do so himself later on. 
He cannot really be blamed for doing so because in spite of this victory and all his ambition, he was still relatively inexperienced in state affairs and would need to hone his military skills to take and maintain the title of High King. After all, he had yet to become King of Alec at this point. This proves that though he had not taken advantage of the chance to become High King, Mwerchta was a skilled soldier to have reaped such vital success in one of his first recorded battles. Among others, Tom Fergus Crookmouth, father to die our mate Max Sir Bale, High King of Ireland, born at an unknown date and died in 565, has been proposed as an ally of Mwerchta's, but as per, was in all likelihood only supportive to promote his and his son's interests. Sadly, he wouldn't get the chance to become High King and probably didn't live to see his son take the High Kingship either. In 485, Mwerchtak is cited as one of the two potential victors in the Battle of Grainert, likely near Castle Dermot. The other suggested victor against King Finchad MacGarchon of Leinster is his great-uncle Corpray. Now, there's no way of knowing whether or not this was true, but as court Pike began to flourish historically in 485 and continued to do so until around 493, I'd say he was probably the one who defeated the King of Leinster. Though there's no reason why his great-nephew, Prince Mwerchtak, wouldn't have been by his side at this battle as his supporter. As we've already seen, Mwerchtak was evidently a brilliant soldier and the kind you'd want to have on your side in battle. Mwerchtak's brilliant career continued going from strength to strength. In 489, his father, King Mwadak, died, and Mwerchtak at last became King of Alec. At the time, he was probably in his late 20s or early to mid 30s. The new King of Alec was in his prime and soon would be at the pinnacle of his power. Mwerchtak is reported to have been the victor at the Battle of Sel Rosnade in 489. 490 or 491, and thus to have killed or been responsible for the soldier's death of Wengus Machnad Fwarik. 430 to 489, the first Christian king of Munster, and his queen was killed soon after as well. In addition, he's apparently responsible for the victory at the Battle of In Moor, scoring decisive win against the Leinstermen in 498. It seems that the Wurch attack was on a winning streak. Or was he? We have to ask ourselves, was Mwerchtak really victorious in so many battles? As I've already mentioned previously, Mwerchtak's life and reign has been recorded for posterity in the annals, with entries covering the period from 482 to 534. Due to his matronym of Mac Erke being a common enough forename, there were mix-ups, and not all of the entries in the annals relate to Mwerchtak Makurke, King of Alec. Also, not every chronicler and scribe of the time was unscrupulous and entirely honest, with many wishing to flatter his descendants and relatives. So, even after the original manuscripts were compiled, it is widely believed that people managed to sneak in some new modifications to make Mwerchtak appear in the best possible light. Perhaps it was a response to the 12th century, a did Mwerchtak make Erke? Whatever the reason, not everything in these annals can be trusted. Mwerchtak's many victories in so many battles are dubious to say the least. Could later authors have edited the records to give him the credit, when it should really be his great uncle Corpore MacNeil and his cousin Eertu getting praised for these one battles? We'll never know, but it is certainly feasible. The Wurch attack finally became High King of Ireland in 513, when he was in around his 40s or 50s. At last, what he worked so hard to achieve had come to fruition, and he had the most coveted and precious crown in Ireland. After a reign of 43 to 45 years over Alec and 19 to 21 years over Ireland as a whole, the Wurch attack died, purportedly near Bru na Bruin. This is where the aided Mwerchtak Make Erka comes in. 
Though it was published in the 1100s, it still remains the only surviving account we have of Mwerchtak Makmwai Daig's demise. It states that he died in an overly dramatic and superstitious manner. The drowning of Mwerchtak Makurka, i.e. Mwerchtak, son of Mwadae, son of Iogan, son of no Noigialak, in a vat full of wine on the hilltop of Claytech, above Bowen, are the exact words in the story. Whether it's reliable is debatable, but it certainly provides us with an interesting image of how this powerful soldier and king ended his days. Mwerchtak had at least three known sons, Forgus Mac Mwerchtag, Beatandrige and Domno Ilchogak, all of whom would reign over Alec in turn, and the latter of whom would rule as High King. The High King ship went first after Mwerchtak's death to Tuathul Male Garden, who curiously he had believed was trying to murder him during his supposedly supernatural death. This inclines me to think it was just wishful imagination on the part of the author of the 12th century tale, but that's just my opinion. It's for you to make up your mind and what you think happened. However his death played out, the throne passed to his sons, Forgus and Domwell. The name Wurch Attack means Marina and is anglicised as Mortimer. Thank you very much for watching.